I'm recording now. Okay, recording now. Okay. Yep. <laughs> well, okay, we'll jump right in, I guess. Yep. Um, so we were just talking about uh, you watched my podcast episode where I talked about you. Yeah. Can you and... tell me? Can you tell me the? Can you just read to my face? Uh, tell me what the joke was that you were I, I feeling apprehensive I, about. <laughs> I believe I said, uh, I believe I asked, uh, do Hank Green got that stank peen? Right. I didn't really you, feel, I didn't feel to me in the moment, it didn't feel like that was a joke about me so much it was a joke <laughs> about uh, about you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I was looking for uh, like, you know, uh, misery loves company, right? So I guess I was looking for if someone else had that. <laughs> I, I think more more than anything, you were looking for something to say in the moment <laughs> before yeah. you moved on to your next topic. Absolutely. Uh -huh. I, if if we're being real, that's one hundred percent what it was. But uh, I would like to formally apologize for saying uh, that. Yeah, and it was very much. Um, so I don't. So now that we're recording, I feel I feel weird about saying this, but it, it is the reality um, <laughs> that I did not I had not he heard of you. I didn't know who you were. Uh, but this is the, this is the way of the Internet now the, yeah. Like you are constantly being bombarded by cool people who have like a million followers on Instagram. Oh. And you're like, I had no idea that that person existed until now. But All it's right. especially weird when that happens while simultaneously <laughs> a bunch of people are calling you stank peen. Uh, yeah, which yeah, that... for clarity, I don't <laughs> mind. It was okay, a, it was a delightful experience, uh, <laughs> okay, and then good. I looked into you, and you know the other thing is, yes, I know that we'll start like start the podcast, maybe in a more structured way soon. But the other thing is that sure, let's be honest, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people who have our jobs suck, and yeah. uh, uh, many of our <laughs> colleagues, and so my my not. Not from like looking at you and being like, I bet that guy's got some baggage or problematic moments in his <laughs> career. But like right. my, my first thought was like, well, before I before I like engage with this, I'm going to like look right. at this guy. And I watched some of your stuff and I was like, oh, he seems lovely, which that is a lot is kind of a minority experience. Honestly. Right. Uh, well, I mean, that yeah, that you that is very nice of you to say. And I thank you for that, because uh, obviously you're the. I am the arbiter of who is good and bad in the world. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's that is, the. Yeah, that's I think every. Knows. <laughs> it's the moral. You are the moral compass. Um, please, please <laughs> have that not be true. <laughs> no, I'm, I just mean uh, obviously me yeah. and other people who do what we do. We sure. look. I, I look up to you a lot, so it's, that that yeah. means a lot. It's get all this gross crap out of the way. Oh, <laughs> all this mushy crap. <laughs> yeah, be like, I like you. I like you too. You seem nice. <laughs> yeah. This is nice. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, Lovely. it's just smile and nodding the Thanks whole time. Thanks for cleaning up your office before the meeting here. It looks good in it's, there. Does it really? There's a, there's I see a the vacuum, vacuum and the vacuum made, vacuum made me think that you'd cleaned. I've never used it. It's it's just for show. It's to, it's to make people think I <laughs> use it. It's art. It's just a, <laughs> yeah, I just like the design. It's actually a cutout of a vacuum. It's actually oh. two dimensional. <laughs> it's just to give the illusion to my oh. podcast guest that uh -huh. I'm tidy. Okay, cool. Um, well, I guess I can start the podcast now in a nice way, a normal way. Sure. Hello, this is podcast. This is a very, really good podcast uh, with a huge guest, monumental guest. Six foot one. <laughs> is that your actual height? Yes. I went last Sheesh. time I checked. Sheesh. Okay, not bad. I am not... I'm not over six feet, so I'll, I don't know what that's like, but, um, I, I'm here with world renowned, uh, a genius, certified genius. Uh, he's an, he's an author. He's a, he's a YouTuber. He's a, he's a, an entrepreneur, if you will. He's a, he's also a Grease 2 super fan. It's true. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, Hank Green. He's here on the podcast. Hello. Uh, Hold on. Can you can you hear this? I do. It's those people who cheer on your podcast. Yeah, it's they are very overworked and highly underpaid. <laughs> but it's okay. They're, yeah. They like they're here for the fun of it. That's the, uh, that's the beauty of royalty free is that you <laughs> you only have to you only have to pay the once or probably <laughs> even less than that. Yeah, the never. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks. I. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Uh, yeah. This is gonna be a good time. Obviously, you've heard it before, so it's just it's it's me shooting the shit for a while. Yeah. So uh, that's what 
will be doing. I love so. it. In fact, I listened to the, I listened to this podcast and I thought to myself, gosh, that sounds nice. I <laughs> there there is a uh, there is a a pleasantness to it in that it does not seem to be and I uh, this sound suddenly as I was saying it was started to sound like an insult. It does not seem to be trying <laughs> very hard, um, uh, but but in a very pleasant way where it's like let's just right. be calm for a bit and talk yeah. about interesting stuff with cool people. And, yeah, uh, yeah. And I was worried it was going to be one of these like high energy things where we were going to be trying to like out joke each other. Uh, oh because no, because you're no, very no. funny, and I just I. I, I'm happy to do that, uh, yeah. but it is not something. It is not. It's not. It's not. It's harder to look forward to. <laughs> Absolutely, I know what you mean. Yeah, I being in the I guess comedy space and being when I'm on other people's podcasts that are like that, yeah. I always feel like like an immense pressure to kind mm -hmm. of match their energy and always be joking. And it's like I don't know. It's like I feel like it's more funny when. Uh, funnier, more funny. Well, I think it's more funnier if uh, you you have those. It's it's just more human, and yeah. then within that, you can sort of sure. I don't know. You can find comedy just being a normal guy. I don't know. That was like, I don't know. Being around comedians, especially stand up comedians, is a fucking nightmare. It's work. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> is insane. There's, there's no moment that is not work. And I like yeah. I love I love all my stand up comedian friends, but it's like. Yeah. Wow. Literally that's after a, that's like a you want to got to you got to take a shower after hanging out with them for a while. It's like <laughs> this is a lot. It's like, I, it's like, I've like yeah. They, they I've have, like go on. They have to be testing. They it, 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 you know, it's hmm. a very hard job and I feel like there's a certain there's a certain amount of it that is like this is part of the job we're testing material and we're we're always trying to come up with new material and right. and so like a, a social hmm. in, interaction becomes a bit transactional in that way, but it's it's, a, right. it's part of the job. There's another piece of it that is like, I do not know how to communicate with people except through uh, loud jokes. And <laughs> yeah. that, that is, I have had some uh, some friends that ha as they have gotten older, I'm 40 years old now. So that that, that actually mm -hmm. uh, uh, over time has, t they, they have tempered and now are, are just much more enjoyable to hang out with. That's, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice feeling. Yeah. I've, well, yeah, when I started doing stand up, I was like 19 and I we moved to I moved to Toronto when I was 19 and then uh kind of like being in that mm -hmm. scene, especially when I first started dating my my girlfriend, um and she was hanging out with me and my like comedian friends. She was like, "What the fuck was that?" Yeah. <laughs> like, that was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. It was like it's just <laughs> bit after bit after Every, bit. It's like everyone is very funny and no one laughs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's all just comedians going like that's that's really funny. That's funny. <laughs> can I use that, or can you? Are you going to use that? Yeah. <laughs> what, we wonder how's this going to work. Yeah. Um, have you? Uh, well, I know. Have you ever uh, tried like improv or stand up or anything like that? Um, I have done t tiny, tiny bits. Um, I sort of for a while did musical comedy, and mm. uh, and so I would I would stand up on stage. I would. Uh, play the songs the songs are funny you don't have to worry about that's one of the great things about standing there with the guitar is like yeah. you're not gonna forget <laughs> the next part of your set um true though i i did i did try my best to occasionally just completely forget half of a song <laughs> and uh and then i would joke between the songs and yeah. people would laugh but i always did it to audiences who already knew who i was and right. many of them even knew the songs and so it was it was as Different forgiving a crowd as you could have imagined. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, that was a very big, uh, difference, uh, when I started to stand up cause it was like doing comedy for people who don't know you at all or don't give a fuck about you cause they're right. other comedians yeah. and yeah. they just want to go on stage. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then doing shows for people who know me from like the internet, it's like, Oh, this is how it's like s supposed to be. <laughs> this is it's nice. So this good. is actually it's nice. It's so good to stand up in front of an audience who already sort of like, you don't have to introduce them to your vibe. Like right. they get it already. And that that's like the stand up comedian dream is that you get up on a stage and yeah. people, and you don't have to like, the barrier to you is much lower. Right. Yeah. They're already on board, yeah. which is, which is nice. They're already, yeah. They're expecting it. Yeah. So you Man, can remember. you can take more risks. You can do more interesting stuff. You don't have to like like 
when you are first starting in anything, it, it is often the case that you have to sort of like stick to convention more. And then once you have established yeah. yourself some, you can uh, break Fart out around, of boxes. Yeah. For lack of a better word. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, okay. Actually, okay. We could talk about this really quick. Um, so the, the TikTok you made about me, um, well, not about me, but in response to one of my tweets um, about... I don't, re I don't remember it. Wait. That's okay. It was the... <laughs> If you put helium up your ass. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so this is this is how it all began. <laughs> yeah, this was the the catalyst, I guess. Uh, the, uh, so I I remember seeing like I got a bunch of DMs from people being mm -hmm. like this that wouldn't work. Your fart it wouldn't change anything. And then I got a bunch of other DMs from people being like this would work. This mm -hmm. would make your farts high pitched. Mm -hmm. So what what is I, what is the answer? <laughs> yeah, so um, so my initial, my first thought was, yes, I think right. that it would. Yeah. Um, and then my second thought was, no, I don't think that it would. And mm. then I talked to someone who has done this. No and he, way. And he was like, it did not. Ah, oh, man. Um, so yeah, so like it, it is a perfectly testable thing. Um, it's not hard to get helium into your colon. Uh, right. I mean, it's not something that I would do, but like, no, it's, you know, it's certainly <laughs> it's a, thing it's, you it's can a possible do, yeah. thing. <laughs> and like, also, I'm not I'm 100 percent sure that if if I had a fart that was higher pitched than normal, that I would notice, <laughs> you right. know, like you take like I know my own voice pretty well. I know what I sound like. I know what people sound like. You suck some helium. Yeah. And I'm like, that sounds different. But farts feel like they're kind of all over the place in terms of True. pitch anyway. Yeah, it's like sometimes you can have like a fur, like a grasp on what type they're going to be, but at the end of the day it's like it's it's anybody right. it's it's any anybody's game down there. Like who <laughs> who knows who knows what's going to go on. What kind so, of noise is is going to So make? the 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 way that it was explained to me then it, it made sense to me. That so yes. so helium makes your voice sound more high pitched because right. um because it is a lighter gas. And so higher pitched noises travel more efficiently through it. And so the, the noise when you are okay. producing noise with your mouth is being produced way down here in, in your throat. And then, mm -hmm. then it's traveling through a medium, which is the breath that you are expelling. Okay. And so that's the medium that it's, it's coming out of. And so like that is the point at which the the sort of like lower frequencies are getting dampened and the higher frequencies are getting elevated because they're going through this medium. And then once it's out okay. into the air, it stays the same pitch because it was like made that, it, like that's the pitch that was coming out of your mouth. But with your okay. ass, it's only, uh -huh. there. It, it's, it's sort of, for the most part, I would think. Yeah. And it seems that like inside is all helium, but outside very quickly it mixes with the atmosphere. And so... There isn't like a canal that is pure helium the way that it is when you're exhaling helium from your lungs. Uh, okay. So you have this so like what, from your voice box to your lips is basically would be, you know, a very high concentration of helium. Whereas from mm -hmm. your anus to the out exterior world, there isn't like a, a chamber in which it is mostly helium. Okay. So what you're saying, if some if someday in the future we can somehow like put a chamber in yes. in our butt you would need to be wearing helium pants or some such okay <clears throat> so maybe it is possible someday and it's like you know like cryogenics like freezing people in <laughs> and bringing them back i'm after. not saying it's not possible <laughs> you're not saying it's just it's just very difficult and yeah. it would be pointless to really put all the time and effort into i wouldn't say that i okay. i feel like there's a very clear point <laughs> to hear the higher pitched need. fart and look <laughs> Did you see those guys who were trying to cook a chicken by slapping it? Like, yes, I yeah. like God bless you. Please go, 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 <laughs> do it, make it, make it happen. Try to cook that chicken with yeah, your slapping machine. And and Curtis, I think that you have it in you to build yourself a helium fart chamber. But you do also have to fill your ass with helium. Okay, I guess that's the that's the first hurdle I have to overcome <laughs> first. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you got a, you know, baby step. It's yeah, baby, baby steps. steps. Okay. Um, okay. Well, that we settled it. It is not, and that's and that's it, what I was here for. So I guess I'll go. Yeah. <laughs> I guess this is it. Uh, wow. I mean, thank you for um, 
clearing that up. I'm, I guess yeah. this is now my life goal. I'm quitting YouTube. <laughs> I am <laughs> building a helium fart chamber. Yeah. You, um, do, when, do, when did you feel like you first had a, had an internet audience? Was there like a moment for you? Um, that's a great question. Um, I, I don't know. I feel like this might sound weird, but when I, I started making content on Vine, uh, mm -hmm. back like 2013. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think I, when I first got like, oh my God, what was it? Like, I think I had like 2000 followers and I was like, mm -hmm. all right, I'm set. This is great. <laughs> I, I have the it. most you could ever have. I did it. I made um, a joke and people thought it was funny. <laughs> yeah. That's all I needed. <laughs> um, but I guess right when I thought that was like cool, but I guess I, someone shared one of my vines and that got like a bunch of likes and I ended up getting like, like 30,000 followers in like a week on vine. And I was like, okay, so now this is, now this is actually like something that's like kind of like more, I guess, like a real, mm -hmm. like tangible thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's just, and that, I don't know, Vine was, it was weird. It was a weird app. And uh, <laughs> it was, and I felt like once Vine left, I like lost an audience. Too, yeah. So I was like in sure. a weird limbo for a mm -hmm. bit. Um, but thankfully, I mean, YouTube worked out. Uh, thank God. Uh, but, <laughs> but yeah, it was... Uh, <laughs> It was a weird time for sure. I mean, but I guess there's there wasn't really one. Yeah. Even to me, when I was I had like two thousand, I was like, this is this is great. <laughs> I'm happy. This, there's like people who who like me. Yeah. That, I mean that that is very much my experience as well, where it was not any one moment. Um, mm -hmm. And by the time a moment happened, I had I already felt like a moment. I've, I by, by yeah. the time it like hit. I had already felt like it had already hit, even though I was like wrong for about a while. that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's so weird. I guess, yeah, because I guess, because, I mean, when did you start even, you know, you started making content like. Oh, seven. Like the, and, yeah. yeah. Like, a, so you've been doing it for a good amount of time, <laughs> I think. Yeah. So I guess, like, you were even the, one of the first people to even, like, experience that, really. Like, to even have, like, an an online audience, which is. Yeah. Must have yeah. been weird to deal with. It was, I mean, I, it felt at the time like weirdly completely natural, uh, e mm -hmm. even though there wasn't a lot of, um, there weren't a lot of people that, that was like, oh, this person has already done it. But there were enough, you know, there was like yeah. 20 people um, who, who had done it. Like, you know, Philip <laughs> DeFranco was bigger than us and Smosh was, was bigger right. and before us and, uh, you know, Zay Frank was, of course, before all of us. And mm -hmm. the, you know, and then you had like people like Happy Slip, who we don't hear about anymore, like who had these like great videos and um, doing really interesting stuff. Um, yeah, Happy Slip was, she was a Filipino YouTuber, I think. And mm -hmm. she, she sort of pioneered what we now think of as like Lily Singh style content, um, oh, okay. where she was all the members of her family. Right. And uh, her name is Christine. And like, she just like, like did it for a while. It was really fun. And then now she, she just like went and had a normal career. <laughs> like she never <laughs> like, great. she never like trailed off either. It was just like one day she right. was like, I'm done. Um, I'm done. That's or, like, the way to go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. <laughs> wow. So, um, so there was enough of it that uh, we, we felt like we were late to the party in 2007, you know? Wow. <laughs> Yeah, that's so crazy to think about now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that was, uh, I think Smosh was like the first, like, I think the, that's like the first YouTube video I watched was their like Pokemon theme mm -hmm. song. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, introdu introduced me to YouTube. And like, I was like, You're not the only one. I, what? Yeah. Yeah. It must be for a lot of people, right? Like, yeah. that was huge. And I, <laughs> I told the story in the podcast before, but um, I was at a, a VidCon in 2019. Um, and at one of, at the YouTube party, I think, and I met Anthony there mm -hmm. and I was, I was, I was blackout drunk and I was, <laughs> I was, I remember like just so fucking drunk oh, no. and I was just so happy to be there as my first VidCon and, 
you know, it's, it's an open bar. And I was like, I'm going to take advantage. And then I was, uh, so, you know, thanks. And, uh, <laughs> that um, was YouTube's money, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I, uh, I remember like talking to Anthony and I know I talked to Zira for like, it felt like yeah. thinking back now, it felt like an hour, but it was probably only like five minutes. But <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I remember when I woke up and I was like, well, what did I say? What did I say to Anthony? He's like one of my biggest, like one of my biggest YouTube heroes. Like since I was a no kid. No idea what I said to him. Uh, yeah. That's so scary to think about. He's, I, I think I'm the only person who's been to more VidCons than Anthony. Dang. Suck it, Anthony. <laughs> Take that. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Uh, that's actually not true. Uh, I thought of somebody else, but they work oh, for damn. VidCon, so that doesn't count. <laughs> right. Yeah, that, that doesn't count at all. <laughs> um, also, another thing I, that uh, I, I found out, I did, I did a little bit of research. All okay. Right, I, I'm, I'm, a pretty, uh, I'm a pretty good podcast host. Okay. Um, nice. If <laughs> and your birthday is May fifth. That's true. Wow. You did. You did the deep research. You found out my birthday. Yeah. What? So a lot of people. I, I like. To, I was doing the Nardwar route, where I I go and uh, talk to your family and like, okay, I need some dirty details. <laughs> and they're okay. And they said May fifth. <laughs> uh, no, I bring it up because my birthday is May fourth. Oh, my dad's birthday yeah. is May third. So we've Holy got all. We got all of them right in a row. There. I'm a, it's like a sandwich, and I'm in. I'm right in the middle. You're a green sand. No, we are the bread of the curtis yeah. sandwich. It's a curtis sandwich. It's the green bread, which yeah. is, I guess that's like moldy it's the bread. Best, best kind of sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> when the bread is green, oh man. Yeah. I'm eating that shit up. Um, are do you do you believe in um, horoscopes or anything <laughs> like that? Do you believe in God? I, I was super. <laughs> I was super. I was like, oh shit, where is this going? Uh, I I I. Uh, yeah, as far as horoscopes and astrology go, like, um, TikTok thinks that I am super into astrology. I Like, it is <laughs> okay. constantly sh- shoving astrology content at me, and I'm like, TikTok? Yeah. I am a science man. And, right. like, I thought that I made it clear to you that I was a science man. <laughs> I don't like this. Like, I love the stars. I lo- right. uh, Stars are awesome. Planets are yeah. great, too. And, um, uh, but I, I, as far as, like... Wh- and so, I mean, this is, this is a similar thing, obviously different, but similar things to when it comes to, to you know, God and, and religion, which is mm-hmm. like, I, like, I feel a little bit uncomfortable talking about it because I have like, you know, pretty concrete views on those subjects for sure uh, that deny people's beliefs. And yeah. what I, what I want to be able to say is like, this is what I, this is like how I understand the world and yeah. you understand the world in a different way. And I think that that's fine. And that's fine. What I yeah. don't, but like, it's very hard to, to, to talk about it without being like, this is how I view the world. And from my perspective, your, your way, the way that you view the world is wrong. <laughs> it's wrong. Yeah. Uh, but also the way I view the world from your perspective is wrong. Uh, wrong and so right. like, let's, it's okay for us to think that we're wrong about stuff. Yeah. It's like Batman and the Joker, right? They both think they're. It's not right. like Batman and the Joker because Joker it's is a exa- bad murderer. It's exactly the same. I think. <laughs> <laughs> we can, Nine, I think we can no go one on. in this story is bad okay. murderers uh, hold on i think we can go on record <laughs> this is a quotable line from hank green this is uh-huh a religious people, people are who... like the joke <laughs> <laughs> you know that yeah. that's that that line in the dark night when he's like why so religious uh, <laughs> that's where they pay you the big bucks <laughs> <laughs> very div- that was the director's cut um <laughs> yeah i i uh uh, but why do you ask? Um, are, well, you gonna, just, are you going to do my star chart? Oh no, I'm not. The thing is, I was just, I was just, cause I saw, I, well, we're both, we're both Taurus is why I brought, mm. is why I bring it up. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, uh, there's some days where I'm like, uh, where I see something about a horoscope and I'm like, this is, it's, it's when you were born, you're telling me every person who was born on the, like, we're the exact same, right? Yeah. We're not. I'm yeah. sure, like, I'm there's sure only 12 ways but... to be. <laughs> right. To be yeah, out. exactly. That's insulting. <laughs> um, but then there's some days where I'll, I'll read something about, like, a Taurus. I'll be like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I am a Taurus, I guess. That is so <laughs> Taurus of totally me to do that. Thinking. And it'll be like, you like being warm. And I'm like, I, yeah. Dude, I fucking love that. It's, it's, it's wrap, me, wrap me up yeah, in, a, in, a, mostly... in another person. 
<laughs> it's the most like basic thing. And yeah. it's like, yeah, it's like you like it, things that taste good. It's like no fucking shit I do, man. <laughs> I think everybody does, you idiot. Yeah. I mean, I, in the way that I, I view it and like, again, I feel like I'm, I'm unnecessarily placing myself into a space that like, it's clearly not for me. Uh, just right. because of, of my worldview, but like I do, <laughs> I, I, I guess I like, there are people in my, in my sort of like science community who see astrology as, um, and it can be as, um, a, a kind of con or a scam. And yeah. that there, there are a lot of people and, and certain people specifically can like take the credibility that they create through their astrology practice and then use that to manipulate people in ways that yeah. are unscrupulous for sure in the same yeah. way with religion like obviously there are many religious people who have used the the power of that institution to do very bad things and like everyone right. know, agrees with that like that's not a joker level contra- stuff, yeah. controversial <laughs> statement um right but but there are also like there are really good things about religion like there are times that i'm kind of jealous of it like of course, i yeah. i kind of want to go to a a building once a week and have somebody tell me how to be a person. Cause like, I don't yeah. know. I would, I don't know how to be a person and it's hard and it is a, co- yeah. a cause of constant stress for me. And, uh, right. and also like if there's a bunch of other people there from my town who are like sort of in the same, you know, physical space, but also maybe mental space as me. And I could like go hang out and talk to them. That'd be kind of right. dope, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to get up at in the morning on a Sunday Unless yeah. the punishment is is hell, like right. that, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. way 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 beyond what I can do on a Sunday morning. Uh, yeah, and and no so chance. like there is a piece of that that I I am jealous of. And in the same way, I think that astrology can be a way of self reflection, you know, and like it's mm-hmm. a, it's a path into that. And and like far be it from me to uh, come at people for taking some time to think about themselves, um, right. <laughs> and uh, and examine, uh, you know how their how their week was you know yeah i mean i definitely agree with um like being jealous of that a bit because if when you see these like like super religious people who are who belong to the or like christianity whatever Mm -hmm. it's just like i think having that sense of like i guess like purpose i guess or like higher calling i suppose and yeah that seems really nice and i've like i don't know i just as much as i I'm jealous of that. I just can't see myself ever uh, yeah, doing I, that. Even just in terms of spirituality, I've never been that. Mm, it's, yeah. um, I don't know. I mean, and TikTok, another thing like TikTok, uh, they show me so many oh. fucking spirituality things. I'm like, <laughs> I saw one of today where it was like, this girl was crying about a rock that she had because it has like really strong powers. And I was like, that's great. But it could be just a rock. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a like a rock. It could, like a rock, that, but yeah. I mean, like maybe a really dope rock, though. I have gotten to the yeah. point where where um, and it and because there wasn't a structure around it for me to just like like plug into. Though I think that in in a, in America, maybe all over the place now, it is it is sort of like nobody feels kind of right just plugging into an ideology. It, it feels more like you have to sort of form it yourself. But I yeah. feel like at this point in my life, I have a pretty good um, structure for understanding the universe, and it took yeah. a long time. <laughs> right. <laughs> so and you did it. Yeah, and, and but like, would it work for someone else? I don't know. Unless so you're, well, it might if, work for like a couple other people, but if you it only works for Tauruses. That's right. Of course. Now that all makes sense. One twelfth of people is a lot of people, though. So I think there's some money. <laughs> That's to be made true. Here. That's at least a thousand. <laughs> Um, I, um, I know we brought up TikTok uh, quite a few times, but, um, you're one of my favorite TikTokers. I'll say it. Oh, wow. That feels really good. Yeah, I know. I know. I need like that. When people, when, when people say that to me, it, it, it jazzes me up, man. It's, so I, I mean, I, it's why it's wild how, how good that feels. Why does that feel so good? I don't, I'm, I don't know. I'm embarrassed. Not this is that a religious like, experience. Not that it, not that you like in part, it feels good because you, you said it, but in part it feels good because I want to be a good, good TikToker. You are. I mean, I mean, you've been making content for a while. I mean, you know how to make, you know how to film a video. That, I I, that that's sometimes people will be like, wow, Hank did a transition. And I'm like, 
I'm a 40 year old video <laughs> producer. Like I've been yeah. making, I can make videos for my entire <laughs> career. I don't, I know how to edit. <laughs> yeah. I've been doing this a long time. Uh, but, but I think it took me a while to, to decide to like really make TikToks because I was terrified. My camera stopped. Oh, all good. I was terrified that, um, that like, I, that, you know, it's like, it's almost like going to a foreign country. Where it's like, I don't know, do they eat bread here? Like, what are yeah. they going to get mad at me if my <laughs> shoes are tied the wrong way? All right. Can like, I put helium up my ass here? <laughs> what are Am the rules? <laughs> and and I, you know, I th- I felt a little bit like if I like I could easily make some accidental cringe, and then the kids would be like, I can't believe Hank tried to TikTok. <laughs> um. So I was I was like uh, legit nervous about it at first, though I yeah. think it turns out that it is it might actually be kind of hard to make accidental cringe on TikTok if you have a basic understanding of internet. Yeah. I know I my introduction to TikTok was um pretty negative and I feel like mm. a lot of uh, a lot of the videos I made like when I first started like kind of getting an audience on YouTube was was about like weird bad things on TikTok. So for the longest time I only associated TikTok right. with just bad weird like harmful um, mm-hmm. like misogynistic, just bad content. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know, as time went on and I started like act like actually like using it more, it's like, I don't know. It's like, you actually see some, like there's some like really good content on there, really talented people and like good people, mm-hmm. which is nice. But I guess with anything, it's always the, the bad shit that people. Well, <laughs> focus yeah. On. Well, and it's, but it's also so strange because as a user, I don't see it because TikTok knows who I am well enough. Yeah. To not show me Noah Beck. Well, they don't know you well enough to not show you a hor- uh, horoscope video, so I don't right. know. Right. Well, I guess that, like that's the thing. Of course, TikTok doesn't actually know anything about me. They just know that <laughs> yeah. people who like the things I like also sometimes like astrology content, which, right. you know, I'm on like, you know, bisexual D&D TikTok and and thus <laughs> there's a probably there's a, some overlap there with, with more right. spiritual content. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd, uh, you know, I'd give you some reassurance cause, uh, you're, you're, you're crushing it on there. And, uh, I feel like I've, I've learned a lot from your TikToks because um, I feel like you make the them... real goal. Exactly. And which I kind of wanted to segue again, but, um, the, uh, I guess learning things like learn, like teaching things to people is mm-hmm. really difficult, but I think you have a really, uh. I don't know. You have a really, uh, like it's easy to, you, I think you put things in, like you can go into detail, but you explain things very, uh, well, like the one you recently did about that. Uh, I had a weird name. It was about like traveling faster than light. You responded uh, the to Al-Kubi that guy. Air drive. Yeah. Uh, I w- I've never even heard of that. And for some, for that guy to be like, they did it, they did it. And it's, you can do it. We can go faster than light now. Um, I, was, I was so disappointed by that guy. He felt like yeah. he, he felt like he had the, 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 a chance to do yeah. something more interesting than what he is doing right now. But yeah, uh, I guess if for the people who don't are lost, there is a video of some, I guess he's like a journalist type guy. Mm. He, he was making like a, a video about um, the Alcubierre. Is that how you so say yeah, it? So yeah, he basically said scientists yeah, have figured out a way to make an Alcubierre drive, which is a way of traveling yeah. faster than light. Um, mm-hmm. It is more of a thought experiment into how one could travel faster than light. Um, right. And the... The thought experiment that Alcubierre put forward in the 90s required exotic forms of energy that we don't think exist, that might exist, but that as far as we can tell don't exist. And okay. then recently a paper came out there like, actually, we it, it seems like you could build an Alcubierre dry drive with our mm-hmm. current understanding of how the universe works, which is, you know, changing sometimes. Right. Um, by, w- without needing negative energy. And... That is okay. a that is a big deal. Like it, it is really interesting, and it's a really interesting like math thing. It's an interesting physics thing, and For it's sure. also interesting from a cosmological perspective and, and from like a human perspective, where it's like part of the worry that we have is that you really can't travel between star systems, mm-hmm. and it seems like maybe probably you can't because if it was easy to do, we would. It is likely that there would be something that we would have seen at least uh like some sign now. but also just a, a, a like a high likelihood that if if things grow exponentially as like we have on the surface of the earth 
that right. they would have grown exponentially throughout the galaxy and it wouldn't have taken that long for, for them to sort of take over our star system, right. um, probably before we even existed. But since we exist, then it seems likely that interstellar travel is really, really hard or impossible. Damn, why do we have to go why do we have to go and exist, man? I'm happy. I'm the, I'm not like every day, but I'm happy I, <laughs> yeah. we exist. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean So so I got to talk a, a little bit about um, you know, about about that and and about you know, I think a, a you know, there there's a a, a lot of nuance and difficulty and like lear like learned skill in the job that I have, which is, you know, how do you communicate complicated ideas without lying? Um, yeah. How do you simplify without lying? And and here's here's for anybody who's interested in that. Here's a piece of insight. Um, if you are simplifying in order to make something more exciting, and you think. Well, I'm get this is how I'm opening the door to people so that they will be interested in consuming this content. You right. probably are doing a disservice to your audience because you are pretending that it's more exciting than it actually is. Often it, oftentimes this is done intentionally and people know they're doing it and, and like it is a disservice where they're like mm -hmm. let's try to find the most like the the way we can portray this as something that's really exciting or really scary when in fact it's actually they they've just taken a headline and like changed a couple Click. of words and they yeah. turned it into like, I don't mind what we call clickbait as long as it's not lying. I think right. that sometimes people can get, get stuck behind the idea that like, well, if my headline, which is kind of a lie, gets people into the article and then I'll tell them the truth. Yeah. That's a pitfall too, because most people only read the headline. And so they come For away sure. with the lie. And, and that's yeah, that's done terrible things as we've, as, as we've yeah. seen in the last four years. But the other thing that you can that you should be doing is asking, how do I simplify to make this easier to grasp, um, mm -hmm. to contextualize it inside of the mind of the learner? Um, yeah. And that's a totally different thing. So like, to me, there's like two things that you could be thinking of. One is, how am I gonna make this sound interesting enough that it's gonna benefit me, the, the science communicator, because people will then right. consume the content, versus how do I make it, like what you should be thinking about is the audience. How, how do you make it for them? Um, right. And because then your first priority is to have the information, ha have like right. the end result be an accurate understanding, not like a full understanding, but an accurate understanding. Right. And that's, yeah, that's so much better for all parties. <clears throat> I, that's yeah. that's yeah. something I... It's harder though. Absolutely. Yeah. I struggled with that a lot. I made a, a video about uh, artificially, like, Gen like AI generated content. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was really fun. I was like, I spent like, uh, put a lot of work into it and like was scripting it and planning it and everything. And it was a lot of fun, but I, like, I didn't, it was sort of a learning process for me too. Cause I didn't really know too much about AI generated content. I was mm -hmm. just like excited about the topic and the idea. And I thought there could be something really funny there. Yeah. Um, but finding a way to explain something like that, and while I hardly understand it was really difficult. Um, mm. So it was a, it was a lot. I think I did an okay job, but I don't know. Still, it's still so many like things that I was maybe not incorrect about, but probably I could have been clearer, but yeah. I don't know. I think the more I do it, I guess, cause I wanted, I don't know. I want to start making more videos like that about like that are more sort of like educational and mm -hmm. more like video essay type stuff, but it's hard when there's this pressure to like be funny, but also be like in informative, I guess. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't think I, I don't think there's that much tension there. I think that you like you you wouldn't have a problem being funny and informative at the same time. The hard part is that yeah, um, you know you have to know more than you're saying when you're doing something like that, and that's right. like and that means that like <clears throat> uh, to get to be able to like to convey it in an interesting way. You just have to like know like twice as much as you're actually talking about, and getting to that point, it's, it's just work. It just yeah. takes a lot of time. Like, ma like I don't make yeah. those videos that much anymore, where they're like yeah. longer ten minute videos explaining a, a complicated topic because it's like, ah, yeah, you know? know, like you, you, it's like it's like two full days of research, and exactly, if you're yeah, lucky, yeah. 
yeah it's it's so much i guess it's like it's really it's valuable though for sure yeah i guess it's like i don't know learning is good <laughs> <laughs> and it, it does get easier as time goes on yeah, yeah that's true i guess yeah um i want to do uh touch on something that's like i guess more i guess like advice but it could be edu- uh, educational for um people but when i was like doing my uh extensive research on you um i found out your birthday we know that which is uh-huh. pretty pretty epic of me i'll we say talk way too a, long about that yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh <laughs> um let's talk about your birthday even more how about what is the best part of, no i'm kidding uh um no when i was researching um like i know you've obviously done a lot of things obviously but mm-hmm. um the sheer like the list of like different like avenues and like like different mediums you've like explored and and worked on it's like Mm -hmm. it's really it's really admirable because i uh i want to do more in like in the world of comedy i want to like write uh like a screenplay Uh, i'd love to start writing and like acting and stuff um but i feel like really stressed and overworked with like youtube and stuff Mm -hmm. uh obviously um so I wanted to ask, like, how how have you sort of, um, like, conceptualized, like, projects and ideas and actually, like, gone through with them? Because there's a whole thing of, like, yeah, I want to do this, but actually, mm-hmm. like, acting on it and, like, putting the time into it um, is very difficult for me. So, um, there's, yeah, how do you, how do that? How do that? <laughs> there's... <laughs> There's definitely a pickiness to it. So like, I don't get excited about a thing unless it starts to feel possible. And right. okay. uh, unless, and, and also, you know, not always, but usually there has to be a pretty clear path. Like I have to be able yeah. to see it. And so um, I was, I'm very, I think kind of lucky in that I came into this world of online video with a different set of ambitions than most of my colleagues. Yeah. So I've never wanted to be on a TV show. Like that was just not right. like I, I did want to be a science communicator growing up. Like I did want that. Um, cool. And I also find one of the things that's very inspiring to me is to be in a new space where, where rules and cultures are being defined and like, you know, I will mm-hmm. never get to have that in the same way that I did with uh, early YouTube. Um, but uh, but yeah. I, I've always been obsessed with subcultures, just small groups of people figuring out their own rules, figuring out their own worldviews. And, uh, mm-hmm. and, and so like, that means that I, I often operate wh- while, um, in, you know, in, in areas that are plenty big, like, like the right. things that I've done, have not, <laughs> I've not been small, but, um, but I'm operating outside of like crowded spaces usually, you know? Like VidCon right. was the, the, when VidCon launched, it was the only online video conference. Right, and, you weren't competing with like VimeoCon or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and like when we started on YouTube, it wasn't, it wasn't crowded there. When we started right. doing educational content on YouTube, it wasn't super crowded in that space. Um, right. and, and, and part of that is seeing that there is like asking like, what's the, what's the thing that isn't being done? And when I see a thing that's being done a lot, it turns me off. Right. And that that is probably goes all the way back to being a nerdy high school student and uh, (laughs) all of the and wanting to define myself in some way oppositionally to the kids who didn't like me. And so I was like, they're they're all into this sort of normal stuff. And so I have to find the stuff that I'm into because I've been kind of excluded from that. And that actually turns out to be super powerful as long as uh, as long as you have you know, a, a number of other advantages, which I <laughs> have in spades. Yeah. Um, so, so, uh, so, so that, that is part of it. And when you can see a clear path, it's less mm-hmm. work. Right. Okay. Yeah. And when it's less, when it's, when it's less crowded, it's less work. Right. You don't have to really, yeah. I guess like if not, I wanted well, to become is... a YouTuber now, oh man, no way, no way. It's way too yeah. hard. It's, it's, <laughs> no chance. it's so, it's so much, so much work. Too and, many. Yeah. Uh, and, but like, 
So and and so and but but also as I've like you know continued to do different things that the you know the the tools in my toolkit have expanded, mm-hmm. and that means that like I have continued having like seeing exciting avenues. Um, right. And whether that's like I wonder if I could be a TikToker or I wonder <laughs> if I could publish a novel or like which was right. a very that was a, a long process but the path was clear because so what. What was uh? What made you more? Uh, what made you more proud? Uh, becoming a TikToker or writing, <laughs> <laughs> writing novels? <laughs> Is it, they, they are they are completely different. They, I am proud of them for completely different reasons. Right. And and I like I am not proud. Of, I mean I like I'm I probably shouldn't be as proud of being a TikToker as I am, <clears throat> or I am worried about saying it because I think people will le- le- think less of me. But <laughs> but only because I think they don't understand how interesting a place it is. That's what YouTube was like when it started anyway. Yeah. And it was like, you, well, even now I well, feel I'm embarrassed to tell us. people, when I tell people I, I'm a YouTuber, it's oh. weird. They're like, what? I've never had that. That's, that's nice. I yeah. mean, well, actually YouTubers, people, now it's actually okay. When I say comedian, I, mean, I never say I never say that because they always go, oh, what's your so? What do you do? What's your stand up like? <laughs> what do you What do you talk? That my my least favorite one. So what my least favorite. <laughs> my least favorite one is so. What are your jokes about? <laughs> <laughs> what do you talk? What kind of well, fucking question is that? Everything. I am I am really focused. I just yeah. do dinosaurs. <laughs> I am a dinosaur humorist, and yeah, that is it. <laughs> <laughs> this is prehistoric comedy, and that's it. Uh, I mean, there's probably a space for a dinosaur comedian, um, uh, but well, only if they're yeah. not human. Yeah, like an actual dinosaur, yeah. <laughs> a little T-Rex <laughs> holding a mic. He can't hold it all the way up to his mouth because <laughs> he got little arms. Uh, that's yeah, cute. yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm proud of those things for different. Like, it's obviously harder mm. to write a book than to make a TikTok. Um, I'd assume so. And, and it, it is also, there's a thing that is similar about them, which is that like understanding an audience is yeah. tricky. Um, but with a book, you work for five years uh, on something that no one gives you any feedback on except for like your wife, brother, and editor. And, <laughs> right. uh, and then you publish the book and then you, you find out whether or not it sucks. Um, whereas right. a TikTok, uh, you find out whether or not it sucks and then you adjust and then you make two more that day. Right. Yeah. You can't make a couple of books in a day. That'd be, no. I mean, you could, but they wouldn't be very good, I guess. <laughs> it's just, just a lot of copy paste. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Well, well, thank you. Yeah. I always, I, something I struggle <laughs> with so much is just like devoting time. I think I just like, I've become so accustomed to YouTube and like that instant feedback that mm-hmm. I think I, I think that's something I need to learn myself is to just like not need that and just make something because I like making it. And when it's done, maybe it'll be cool. And if not, then fucking try again. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, I, I think that I de- that, that for me, it's been about idea generation and, and like seeing, seeing a path and, mm-hmm. um, and, and that has to do with a bunch of different stuff. One is like having the, the, the privilege to be, to, to have it be open. Uh, and then there's like, stuff like who you know and and like but also like what what spheres your ideas happen in are deeply affected by what you are curious and passionate about right and i've been curious and passionate about business since before i was a youtuber so like there there was always and like that's such a that's such fertile ground because uh that's the structure upon which our society is built in a right. lot of ways, maybe Capital unfortunately, a... <laughs> um, and so that that uh, you know, it's much easier to function uh, for an idea to function inside of a system that already exists. You know, for sure. Um, do you think uh, do you think Shakespeare would have been a TikToker? Oh, uh, yes, absolutely. I think. I would have loved to see that. If I they had he, TikTok I back then, I think he would have killed it. And I, th- but I yeah. do think that he would have written a lot fewer plays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he would have been too, way too busy scrolling that for you page. Yeah, for it was called the for the page back then. 
<laughs> oh shit Re- renaissance tiktok that is an amazing idea for a youtube video <laughs> oh true <laughs> for, for the page um okay well i don't want to okay i had a i wanted to do like half and half like interview and uh sort of science quiz for the podcast mm-hmm. um so i asked my um uh, followers on Instagram at VRG pod um, who uh, that I, t- I told them that you're coming on the podcast. Mm-hmm. A lot of them, I will say like 50% of them were like, is, are you serious? Or are you joking? Are you actually on the podcast or not? <laughs> <laughs> they thought I was just uh, lying. Um, it's, but, it's, it's weird because you of course are a bigger YouTuber than I am now. I, I don't know. I'm not. You get more. I have this conversation with people all the time. You get more views than I do. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm... I think in the, the overall... Uh, yeah. I, you know... I get are, it. I get it. I just, I just want to make it clear that we are peers. <laughs> yes. But at the same time, literally, I, you are 6'1". I am not 6'1". So you are literally the bigger YouTuber. <laughs> um, so 50% I, I of my... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is fact, a scientific fact. Um, but half of my, half the responses are, uh, I don't believe you. There's like 40% that were all about like farts and poop. Um, and then there's like, what, what did I say? 50, 40? 10%. So like 10% left. There are, um, there are actually real science questions that people oh, wanted to know. Lovely. So I'm going to go through some, maybe we'll do, they don't have to be like lightning round, but you know, we'll, We'll get some quick answers um, and just, you know, answer the questions that the people got. Okay. Are you cool I'll see with that? what I can do. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 I think it's always, also always important to be able to say, I don't know. So I will try to do that okay. when I don't know. I, okay, cool. Um, so this one's actually from me. Uh, <laughs> you don't have any followers on Instagram at all, do you? <laughs> no, it's, they're all bots. Um, so... Boats. Mm-hmm. How, do, how do they work? <laughs> like, I, I, which part? How do they not sink? Go underwater. Yes. Ah, so you got a boat made out of metal. Metal sinks, but metal boat no sink. Yeah. Metal boat full air and average of. So if you take the if you take the 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 area of the boat that is under the water line. Yes. And you take the density of all the metal and the density of all the air. Um, and also the weight of all of the ship that's on top of that. Um, okay. That will actually be the same as the density of water. So, so basically okay. at the water line, you can count all of the air that's under the water line as, uh, as included in the density of the ship. Okay. And so you just, you basically, you mix up, you froth up all that metal with a bunch of air and it's got a bunch of air pockets in it and it'll float. So... Wow. That's that's why. Because there's no hole in boat. And if there's hole in boat, then water rushes in and then boats sink. Okay. It's because there's no hole in boat. Because <laughs> 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 I talked about that on my podcast, like, I think last week. And I was complaining about how I've always looked up videos and how they work. But I was like, I just can't. They should sink. They are so heavy. <laughs> They're very I go, heavy. Well, it, does, go, it's, it is counterintuitive because it's like, I don't like... You don't, you don't understand, like, I guess take a, next time you're at, at a pool or the beach, get a beach okay. ball and try to get it under the water. Like it is right. hard to push air underwater because air is, or water is heavy and right. air is not. Okay. That's a good way of putting it too. See, that's what I'm saying, man. You're good at explaining. So just imagine that a boat is like, full of beach balls. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There we go, man. Is that easy? <laughs> um, okay. This one, um, are birds real? Uh, from what I can tell, if anything is real, birds are real. Uh, I, I do like the idea that that the people, the FBI agents who invented birds also made them poop on people just as like, just not for like a, like a clear reason. They're just like, you know, it'd be funny (laughs) if we built, if we built like poopers into them. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, true. Yeah. That was devious. Devious and also a a, a huge amount of work. Like, yeah. Have you ever seen how much a pigeon poops? 
a God. lot. Yeah, that, they got to refill them a lot. They have to go back think? to the, the poop refill station a lot. <laughs> I feel bad for the guys who work there. <laughs> Just pumping crap into fake birds. <laughs> they have to do it by hand, too. <laughs> it was like one of those bicycle pumps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just have syringes full of bird shit. <laughs> Ew. Uh okay, great. Yeah, I that was a good question. Um okay, this one's interesting. Mm-hmm. Why do people feel a need to um squeeze uh cute things? I mean, I, it's not clear. So in, in general when it comes to human behavior, there's a lot of like we've created a name for it and we've looked into it and we've like maybe we stuck somebody in an fMRI machine and, and <laughs> like scanned their brains while they cuddled a puppy. <laughs> uh but but you know, the brain is a uh, is remains, you know, one of like maybe the biggest mystery in science. So we don't know, mm. but it's called cute aggression. So you can Google cute aggression if you want to watch our SciShow video about cute aggression. Hell and yeah. uh, and there are some theories as to why it exists, but like I, I find them compelling but untestable, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's almost like it's a it's a bit like you're you're uh, like there are certain areas of your brain that can get overloaded. And like you and so to okay. get get that overloading out, you like want to <laughs> squish it. I have a four right. year old uh, son and he will like when when he sees his like friend after a day at school like his yeah. his like stuffed animal friend his hippo yeah he like grabs <laughs> on it and he goes Aah! like it's definitely that, innate like he didn't learn that from somewhere he's right. just like i'm so happy to see hippo <laughs> he just squishes his face in it and just screams and it's extremely cute and then i want to grab him and go yeah, yeah so, it's a circle of life uh-huh that's adorable. Yeah. Um, what if I just said, why do people want to squeeze boobs? Why do people want to do that? <laughs> I d- also <laughs> don't know. Also, <laughs> one of the mysteries of the human brain. Yeah, uh, maybe we'll but, get to the bottom of that. I mean, it, it, it feels like a circle to me. Like, it feels like the, the, the desire boob? to squeeze a boob feels like a... Squ- <laughs> 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 what came... I'm saying what came first? The desire to squeeze the boob or the boob? I feel like they co-evolved. Right. So, like, boob isn't, like, a common thing among animals. No, um, they're not... Yeah. There's yeah. no, like, like ant boobs. Well, even among mammals. <laughs> uh, like, like pigs don't have boobs. You know, they have teats. Right. But they don't got, like, a big... Like, they don't got boobs. And, and oftentimes the boob sort of just shows up when it's time to nurse and then goes away when yeah. it's not time to nurse anymore. Whereas right. human boobs are there all the time. And yeah, they're eternal. <laughs> you're just searching for merch right now is what you're doing. <laughs> boobs are eternal. Boobs um, are eternal. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and so there, there is a bit of a question as to why, uh, you know, humans evolved to have boobs in this like sexually right. dimorphic way. And then uh, that, it, it, and that likely co-evolved with a desire, like a sexual desire for boobs, which is right. not Even- un, like it happens. Like, like you know, they're like animals grow weird traits just because the the, the you know s- other animals of the same species find it sexy, like weird antlers and um, red red and blue butts on baboons, and it's kind of like. <laughs> We have those too. Like we have like facial hair, right? Is like a like one for us. God, I mean, hair. look at him. Look at him. And uh, <laughs> and it seems like boobs and butts also are maybe a little bit of that for us. Boobs are the mustaches of the chest, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> so glad I came on your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, another one. Why uh, this? I actually got this one a lot. Uh, why can't we eat grass? Oh, that's you know why. Do you know why? Because I made a TikTok about it. Oh, I can't figure it. I it feel was, like I might have seen that one actually. Yeah, it was. It was a. Um, it was one of my breakout moments as a TikTok. Oh, it's because of the. It's because of. Did you mention like goats in it or something like that? I don't think so. But the, yeah, so I, I know. <laughs> Uh, so that, so it turns out, uh, that this is a weird question. Um, so yeah. you can eat grass, uh, you can eat grass in several different ways. One, you can just eat grass. It's not going to kill you. 
It's just right. not going to be nutritious. Second, there are a bunch of grasses that you eat every day, probably. Wheat, corn, both grasses. Uh, but the seeds of the grass, so not really the grass part of the right. grass. Um, weed is weed grass. Well, I guess it is. It's that's like a slang term for it, so that makes it what it is. Uh, it's de- weed is definitely not a grass, um, <laughs> but uh, uh, but I but I have heard you can eat. Oh my thing stopped again. But I have heard you can eat it, um, and then not that I ever would. Uh, <laughs> Cause, That's good. Because I was I was raised back when that that was illegal, and now it's right. not anymore. Um, and then uh, and then there's the the part that's like really interesting about the animals that can eat grass, mm-hmm. which is that they also can't digest grass, but they're the microbes that live in their guts can digest the grass. So like they aren't actually doing the digesting. It's it's the these symbiotic organisms that live inside of their stomachs, without which they would immediately die. Um, Weird. Yeah, are, are doing the actual digesting of the cellulose. And then there's the chemical part of it, which is like, why can't I digest cellulose? Like, it is extremely similar to starch. Like, the, the molecules that oh. you looked at, like, if you looked at a molecule of starch and a molecule of cellulose, you, you would think that they were the same. I would think that they are different Weird. because, like, I have a biochemistry degree, but... Um, right, but like, but to a bozo it, like me, it, it'd be the it, exact it would same. be like, where's Waldo to find the bond that's different? <laughs> right. um, yeah, and it turns out that the reason is that uh, the just this one bond that is different makes it so that they can stack up with each other and and create these like basically pseudo bonds between each other. And so instead okay. of having like a bunch of starch molecules that are sort of like clumped together and not really strongly interacting with each other in cellulose, each one of these you know, sugar chains can mm-hmm. stack in a way where they are bi- they're binding to each other in uh, in really sort of rigid uh, ways that m- you have to have extra enzymes to be able to separate. That's crazy. I'm so getting, uh, I, I'm I've getting... thought a lot about this because TikTok has been yelling about, about grass to me right. for about three months. <laughs> yeah, because I feel like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure they won't shut up about it. Um <laughs> Uh, yeah, when I was a kid, I feel like I remember eating grass all the time. Yeah, I was like, fine. I was a kid. Yeah. yeah. And also, you're going to get new teeth. The grass has like a, like some silica in it that's going to wear your teeth down. But hey, when you're a little kid, you're going to get new teeth anyway. You're going to get new. You're going to get brand spanking new teeth anyway. That's right. God, what a what a what a joy. <laughs> you can do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, you can fuck those get... teeth up. Just destroy yeah. them. <laughs> why did they? Why did my why parents don't I get, get mad new at me? teeth? <laughs> I'm 40 years old. I've been working with these ones for an awful long time, way longer than I was working with the first pair, first set. Yeah, I need new ones. I need some used like, like, teeth. Grow me another set, is, boy. I think that was that's bullshit. When I was a kid, and my parents were like, "Don't, don't get, don't drink a bunch of soda yeah. pop, because then you're gonna get cavities. They're gonna fucking fall out anyway. It doesn't matter." <laughs> that's, that's that is great feed material. Me all, that is feed fantastic. Me all the pop. You got to put that in your type five. That's yeah. Can I use that? Can yeah. I use that, dude? <laughs> I'll use that. Um, okay, actually, this is a segue into another question. Um, but why, we're speaking of teeth, mm-hmm. why why are teeth like, just a bu- why don't we have like a bunch of teeth when we could just have two big teeth? It's <laughs> <laughs> a pretty good no question. Idea. That, I have no idea. I don't know. That I, could, I could make guesses, but I do not know. That like, would uh, it'd be a lot easier to, to maintain. <laughs> Yeah, no space between them. That's what the dentist is always mad about. He's like, you're, yeah. oh, you're not floss. And I'm like, I wouldn't, you wouldn't have to floss if you just gave me two teeth. <laughs> you just gave me one up top, one on bottom. Yeah, talk to God. <laughs> <laughs> Take it not, up with a man upstairs. It's not my fault. <laughs> you're making me floss. It's unpleasant and yeah, time consuming. Even... <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, would... I've got important stuff to do. I don't yeah, have time I mean, to floss. It, the one, one nice thing is that like, if you, you can lose one without losing all of them. So there's that. And then they right. can sort of have different functionalities, but I don't see why one big tooth couldn't do that. But yeah, right, yeah it, it could... there has to be reasons because all all animals, well, I guess like birds kind of have like two teeth. You know, a beak is kind of two teeth. Oh, those are their teeth? Practice, no, I guess? they are not. But like in terms of Essentially, the and t- yeah. yeah, okay. They're yeah. not actual teeth. No. Um, even if they're real. We don't know that though. <laughs> um <laughs> um okay this one was 
I don't know why they would ask this, but uh, why can't we crossbreed a human and a dog? <laughs> Maybe like a furry asked that one or something. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, because they are not genetically similar enough. So I, I think that we have a different number of chromosomes than dogs do. But even even uh, when, uh, if, if that weren't the case, um, you basically, uh, you know, as you evolve, like mm -hmm. as, as evolution happens and like your last common ancestor is farther and farther away from each other, um, yeah. you're, you're like the proteins that make you up um, and, that, and the, the DNA that codes for those proteins are become very different from each other. And like there is the, the question of, of, so with a dog and a, a human, this is all very <laughs> gross, but with a dog and a human, I doubt that, a, an, a, that the sperm would even uh, recognize the egg or yeah. that the egg would even accept the sperm. But there right. are, you know, there, there are questions, like very gross questions, very upsetting questions about whether this would be possible with a human and a chimpanzee. Um, uh. And it wouldn't, it would not uh, be possible. Like you could, th it, there may be ways to create an embryo, but like the, yeah. the, the thing that is holding us back from that is not science, it is ethics, which is very much right. the way that it should be. <laughs> exactly. Um, and uh, and so, it, it, so like it, it, may, it may be possible, um, but we won't find out because we are better than that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's like helium. It's like helium farts, right? Yeah. So there's two, there's, two, there's two questions. Is it possible? But like, let's not though. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> let's, let's maybe not do that's that a, for sure. You're creating that's, a life form, and uh, yeah. it's going to be miserable. So don't do let's that. Let's absolutely not do that. <laughs> um, okay. This one was. I wanted to ask this one because this one made me laugh a lot when I read it. Um, when will we be able to travel at light speed, approximately? <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that they added approximately. Yeah. I, yeah, I know you're not going to tell me like, it's going to be the year 3285. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just approximately, you know, just like ballpark. Yeah, like it, it, it is very, so because we already talked about this weirdly enough, but it, yeah, you know, the, the only way to make a judgment on that, um, because, because of course, like we ca we can't know the pace of future technological change or even the amount of future technological change, but we right. can know that we have never seen. What I so so my perspective, it can't be that unlikely for there to be intelligent life to evolve on a planet. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I might be wrong about that, but it's so weird for something to happen one time. Uh, yeah, and the galaxy is very yeah. big. And there's a lot of stars right. and there's a lot of planets around those stars. And it just seems really like right. that, there, that there's a bunch of other intelligent, uh, yeah. like smarter than us organisms out there in the universe, right. even in the galaxy. And uh, if they if they could easily travel from star to star, then it, it, it they, there are sort of only two reasons why they aren't doing that. Um, one is that it's just too like one that is it's impossible to travel faster than light. Mm -hmm. The other is that there's some kind of uh, intergalactic mutually assured destruction going on where everybody's hiding from each other uh, <laughs> because they're right. terrified and do not want to fight uh, yeah. or be noticed by some very big bad thing. Yeah. Um, so hopefully it's not that one because that's <laughs> yeah. so, that sounds terrifying. Fingers crossed. I guess it's that whole thing where it's like if like like living in a simulation or whatever like how it, how things get so yeah like advanced then we should like if so i don't know that thing the whole thing it starts it trips me out when i start thinking about it yeah i mean there's so the, there are a number of other so that's the fermi paradox is the is right. like there there if 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 it is common if there are so many planets then why don't we see other yeah, or, organisms like us, or any any signs of intelligent life, and uh, mm. and there's a bunch of different solutions. One of my favorite is that uh, after a while you just get bored, and the <laughs> and the species, the intelligent species, just goes extinct because they like stop <laughs> fucking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're like eh, and then they just just kind of over, just it. <laughs> kind of yeah. over it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice way to go out. I'm done. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think of. Uh... 
one we can uh, end on with the science section. Um, oh, this one's, I guess, I don't know if there's studies about this, but why do, or how do um, periods sync up sometimes? I don't think that they do, though that the, the last time I did research on this was five or 10 years ago. So, so there may be more recent research on it. Um, is that but just it, like a myth? It's, it seems like it is uh, just a thing that people notice when it happens and don't notice when it doesn't happen. Um, right. And so, uh, so when it happens, people are like, it's, it's a remarkable thing and you talk about it and, and like that spreads. And when it doesn't happen, nobody talks about it. And so right. it doesn't spread. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but like that, th there, there have been a number of times when, people thought that that was a thing with something and then it turned out actually not not with this particular not with period sinking but with other stuff where it turned oh, out okay. that we were we were wrong about being wrong so i'm not damn i don't know enough about uh because i haven't studied i haven't looked at, looked into it in long enough that i wouldn't be comfortable saying <laughs> i respect that yeah just lie we've already said that's fine just lie <laughs> <laughs> Lying is okay if it's interesting. Um, <laughs> How else are you going to get people to get interested in science except to lie to them about it? Exactly. And then later they find out you've been lying to them and they're like, God, I hate this. <laughs> lie to their fucking face. Um, well, I mean, I don't want to take up too much of your time. We've already gone for like more than an hour, dude. Yeah, your podcasts are usually about an hour, right? This is long. Yeah, around the, around the hour mark. So, you know, I guess we could wrap it up. But this was... Time, time fucking flew. This is a, this is yeah. A well, I because you were like your birthday's May fifth, and I was like, let me tell you about God. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's my that's I know. my doing. Do you? You're the do, perfect podcast guest. Do you have a uh, Do you have a question that you didn't get to? You look disappointed. I look disappointed. You look like ah. I think that's just my face. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're just perpetu per perpetu Oh, there's like a few that I wanted to talk about, but it's all good. Okay. I was going to bring up um, the vaccine for COVID. No, I love the vaccine for COVID. One of my very favorite things <laughs> that exists. I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah, because, um, yeah, that we'll do some. We'll do some good. I guess we'll end it on a good note. This yeah. is positive. Oh, um, I can't wait to get it. Yeah. Um, but it's it's weird because I've talked to people in my life who I would consider friends who mm -hmm. are saying who are kind of regurgitating some anti-vax yeah. things they have seen on the internet which mm -hmm. is pretty upsetting mm -hmm. um because like they're my friends and it's like hey this that could be really like harmful you know mm -hmm. <laughs> um and it is harmful to not so i think if uh if anyone is out there who's very who's even like skeptical about yeah. can you just explain what a vaccine does and how it's good, how you should all get it. Yeah. I mean, so one thing I'll say to, to those, to, to the point of the people who you've been talking to is like, because this disease is a really big deal and because mm -hmm. the vaccine is a really big deal. Mm -hmm. One of the things that our brains want to do with really big deals is examine them. And so For like, sure. you go out and you start examining and then the internet you know, exists, and I think this is also kind of human nature that that like when somebody is looking for something, you kind of want to make that thing, and so like yeah. people will then be out there being like, ah, like now I get to be kind of an anti-vax influencer, and you often right. see that these articles are coming from places that, you know, they they're saying that the COVID vaccine does X Y Z thing. I don't even know what they're saying. But then yeah. also like you look and it's like they've been saying that vaccines cause autism or like or are, are, are like dangerous and bad for 20 years Forever, before this. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. so why? Like, is it all vaccines or is it just that this is your this is your beat? And like this. Yeah. is This is like what you do for a living is you find ways to scare people about vaccines. Right. Um, it, but it but it is normal to like do that to like do that searching around. And I think it's also sure. to some extent in our in our culture specifically normal to want to do it on your own terms and to say like, you know, like, yeah. well, the government is saying I should do it right now, but I'm going to do it a couple of weeks after that. And it's almost like you just want to have yeah. some control in a situation <laughs> where we don't we haven't been feeling like we have very much. I For think sure. To, that that's OK. Um, yeah. I, like this, like I am not I'm I'm I will be there the day they tell me that I can be there. 
Um, yeah. And I think that a lot of a lot of people are in that boat. But then Absolutely. I also don't want to discount the the sort of like, you know, 25 percent of people who we really need to get the vaccine who are going to do it on their own schedule because they want to have some control or they or they yeah. want to wait uh, and like make sure that, uh, you know, and at this point, like people have been getting the vaccine for a long time. So there's not, there's no actual reason to wait, but like, right. Yeah, exactly. um, the, um, but yeah, I mean, what, what a vaccine is, is basically a, a way of showing your immune system, uh, a pathogen before it encounters it in the real world. And mm-hmm. it, there's a bunch of different ways that this is done. Um, for a long time, it's was what was called, um, uh, well, I guess that even for a long time, it's been done in several different ways. One is that you attenuate the vaccine so that so the disease, the pathogen is still alive, but you've mm-hmm. bred it to not be able to hurt you very badly. And so okay. um, so you're actually injecting like a, a live pathogen into a person. Um, and yeah. that uh, that's what, like happening less and less because it's mostly because it's really hard to make those kinds of vaccines because you have to do a lot of testing to get like the exact right balance. Right. Um, and, but, but also because we figured out better ways to do it. And one is to like actually manufacture a little bit of the pathogen, not the whole thing. So like, okay. not like it's the, it's not a dangerous part. Um, it is just a part and it doesn't mm-hmm. have any of the like ability to actually replicate inside of you, which is the, the thing that you don't want it to do. <laughs> right. and so we just, uh, so what we figured out how to do is to give our bodies the code for that little bit and then for a short amount of time, like the, 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 our bodies like take that code, they manufacture those little bits mm-hmm. in like a couple of days and then all, they yeah. all get used up and they aren't there anymore. And then your immune system sort of notices them and is like, that looks like something a little bit dubious, a little bit, I'm not sure if that's good. And then uh, sometimes it will mount a full on immune response to that. And sometimes it will wait for a second look at it. And so Mm -hmm. that's why you get two vaccines is because that that booster is like, seriously, this is a real thing. And the the second time your immune system sees it, it's like, oh, that's definitely I see. This is definitely a pathogen that's out there. And I'm going to, you know, create all of the all of the machinery that's necessary to go after it the moment I see it again. They put their dukes up. Yeah, exactly. It's like Logan Paul boxing match, (laughs) right? (laughs) It's like it's like the it's like it's it's the Cold War and they're the Russians. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like Batman and the Joker. Okay, <laughs> get on board for this analogy. <laughs> it's like me and Christians. We're gonna punch <laughs> each other. <laughs> and as people who like astrology, uh, that is the best yeah. way to describe a vaccine. <laughs> I'm so excited though, and, and like, it's uh. You know, it's a it's a real uh, triumph that we've gotten the vaccines as fast as we have and that we are able to to do it, you know, on our own terms, not change the way that we test efficacy or safety. We did all that stuff exactly the same, which is why it took a long time. Um, But uh, but we we shaved off every uh, amount of time we could without compromising safety or efficacy, which is. You know, we did it ex- exactly the the way that we should have, and like it came together, and like now we're gonna we can see the other end of this thing, and it's just it's exactly. very exciting, and you Remember can start doing hope. shows again. Yeah, I yeah, I mean that's what everyone's waiting for. That's like <laughs> I think that's a if <laughs> finally Curtis can get back on the road. I know the world just... the world can heal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making fucking fart sounds into a microphone again (laughs) inside your helium chamber you're gonna have to tour with it (laughs) i gotta do this i'm i'm freaking i'm i have to resort to this freaking soundboard (laughs) is that that a stream deck you're punching on right now yeah yeah (laughs) it's uh and i put all fart sounds on it it's a i think it this this edition of the podcast was either the best thing or and that's it. It was the best thing that happened in my podcast. Oh, okay. Because uh, then I can fart. I appreciate what you do. Um, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Well, it goes it goes both ways. I um I love learning things. I love watching all your videos, obviously, for a, a long time. And uh, it was it was a pleasant surprise that you would want want to be on my podcast. Um, yeah. And you're always welcome if you want to come back. And uh, yeah. Shh. 
shoot the shit again. Okay. If you want to hear more of my voice, I have a podcast called Dear Hank and John with my brother and one called SciShow Tangents where we, it's like a science game show that you can go listen to. It's plug. plug. Anything else? Anything else Just you want to plug? Just for podcast listeners. That, I, I don't, That's there's it? all the other stuff, but those are the, those are the ones for the podcast listeners. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> the special podcast <laughs> plug. Uh, well, Hank, this is a pleasure. Um, thank you for coming on the podcast and uh, well, hopefully we'll see you again. Sweet. Thank you. Great to hang out. Thank you.